Hallelujah. <clears throat> Bless your name, God. Bless your name. Bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father, for your presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you all again for joining in, to, in with us on the prayer. Whew. Swap scope. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Release your joy, oh God. You are a wonderful Savior, Lord. Continue to let your praise arise. Let your worship arise. Let it be a fragrance, a sweet smelling perfume in the nostrils of our King for all that he is, not just what he has done because he can't help but be amazing because he is amazing. He can't help but be wonderful because he is wonderful. Let your worship arise. Let your worship ascend. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wanted to uh, show you all something. Oh, while I was um, praying a little earlier. I don't know if I can do this in here. Whew, because uh Thank you, Lord God, uh, <clears throat> because the uh, uh, the lightning situation is, like I said, is not fantastic uh, for this these particular types of scopes. But um, I was praying and I looked down, and the Lord, He has a way of, of as we know, of showing of showing uh, us things through different things that we would see in the natural. He'll reveal a spiritual component to us. And what he showed me was uh, ah, the uniqueness of his creation and how what others would see that they don't understand. We always say how God doesn't make any mistakes and he don't make no junk and all that kind of stuff. But sometimes we have to believe ourselves what God has said that goes against how we feel sometimes and what has been released and spoken over us. So I'm going to show you what I saw first and then it'll make sense after I explain it. You won't understand it at first, but just, just give, I'm going to show you what I, what, what he showed me. So this is my, this is my lower half. These are my legs. And if you see one foot is turned straight and this is a regular stance for me. And this foot, my right foot, is turned off, you know, a little off. So most people would never notice that that's uh, about my natural, uh, the way that I'm created was a little different. And so when I was a little girl, uh, they noticed that I had a little limp and you can't, you, I mean, usually the only time you notice it now as an adult is if I wear flats. But uh, had a little limp and so they took me to the doctor and they did all these x-rays and stuff and it was discovered that my uh everything on my right side from my hip to my knee and then from my uh knee to my ankle was in the socket sideways a little crooked a little off and so the doctor told my parents that they needed to break all of my bones from my hip on down and realign everything uh, so that I wouldn't be off centered and so that it wouldn't look bad um, as I grew up. And so, you know, my, my mother said, no, y'all not hurting my baby because that would, it would be excruciating and I would have been in a cast for six months. Okay. And so um, in that, my dad kept saying, well, you know, it may hurt for a little while, but then, you know, it'll be taken care of for the rest of her life. So again, while we were praying, I was leaning against my washer and dryer in the laundry room and I looked down and I saw my, my foot. And at this point of my life, obviously they didn't do the surgery because my mother protested. 
but about 12, between maybe 12 to about maybe 16 or 17, off and on, I would go through these bouts where I would be on crutches because I had a pronounced limp because the pain was excruciating. And they had to decide whether they were going to break half of my lower body and reset it and put me in a, a, a cast for half of a year or whether to just see if I outgrew it. And again, at this point, they, they gave me the opportunity to make a decision. Do you want this or not? And I said, no, I didn't want it. And I really haven't, don't have a whole lot of pain at every now and then it'll bother me. But there's a pronounced limp um, when, again, sometimes, not, not often, but sometimes there's a, it's an obvious limp. But I don't notice it because I'm used to it being out of order and I'm used to it being out of alignment. And so what two things that the Lord showed me on two totally different points of this, this scope. One, the things that were out of alignment that you had gotten so comfortable with being disjointed, being, you know, not right, being uh, not the way that God ordained it to be because you didn't want to set it in order because it was going to hurt too bad for a period of time. The Lord is saying, be strengthened even now to that what he has broken off of you in this moment, in this hour, and even during this time of prayer, not to go back, not to go back because you don't want to hurt in a moment because otherwise for the rest of your life, you are going to be disjointed. You are going to be disconnected. Your life is not going to look the way that God ordained and destined it to be, but allow him to come in and break some stuff in your heart. Allow him to break some stuff in your life. Allow him to break some stuff in your home, in your relationships, in your ego, in your pride. And allow him to break some stuff even as it pertains to the things that you have built yourself up in and made a name out of yourself. Allow yourself to be broken because it's just going to hurt for just a little while. You've been going around with crutches saying, I can do it. It's okay. It's not that bad. You've been waiting for somebody else to validate you. And the Lord says, let me break it. Let me break it all the way. I touched it just a little bit just to show you that it hurt just a little bit. But that the same way it hurt a minute, I can heal it right after that. Let him break it. OK, that's the first thing. The second thing he showed me was he said to the adverse, if you let me break it, I'm going to show you that the thing that you thought made you ugly or made you different, or made you odd. I'm going to use that same thing once you let me touch it to show the world how unique and how special you are. That once it's all said and done, I'm going to make, I'm going to build you up in such a way that that's not even going to be a distraction to you or to anybody else. Once you let me break it, once you let me deal with that thing. Because God has called each and every one of you all to be somebody that nobody else can be. That's why he put you in the earth because there was a void. And he knew in order to fill that void, he needed you in the earth. So don't allow your life to end in this earth and you not satisfy what God has placed on the inside of you. Don't let those gifts be dormant anymore because you're looking at somebody else who don't have that limp that you have. But that limp is going to be part of your testimony. The same way today, this limp is a part of my testimony. Hallelujah. Who would have thought, who would have thought that God would use a deformity to bless his people? Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Because that's what God is going to do with you. When you stop comparing, when you stop trying to fix it, when you stop trying to cover it, when you stop trying to soothe it, when you stop trying to make somebody else make you feel like you all right. He already said, I made you like that on purpose. And I'm going to use what was a deformity to be your testimony. Let him do it. Let him do it, y'all. Let him do it. Let him break it. It'll hurt for a minute, but I guarantee you, I guarantee you it'll be worth it. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. All right, y'all. Uh, now, look, I don't, I mean, if tears, I, if we had to pay for tears, I'd have quite a water bill on my hands tonight, huh? Oh, but oh, the Bible says, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. 
<laughs> you know I'm country, Allison. Wait, I got a saying for everything. Oh, uh, I'm going to reap in joy. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, bless your name. Bless your name. Now, on the funny side, I'm going to say something to you. I'm going to show y'all something else. Now, we done, we done prayed. We done worshiped. We done cried. We got a little deliverance. He healed some places. He challenged us to let him do some things in us that we didn't necessarily want to even talk about. So now we're going to laugh just for a minute. You know, God gave me such a wonderful gift. And um, two little fur dogs, two little four-legged dogs uh, that just make my life a joy. So one of my dogs, I have a Zion, and Zion is, uh, he is hilarious. But my little girl dog, who... Her, she, her name is Mally, but um, I call her Mama. She don't even know her name is something else other than Mama because I call her Mama. But Mama is a worshiper. Who but God would give me a worshiping dog? And I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Hold on. I'm going to show you. Watch what she does. Mama, give God glory. Give God glory. Say hallelujah. 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 Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Now, if that ain't funny, what is? But a dog that when you start shouting, she starts shouting. If I start jumping when I was praying and I was jumping up and down, she started jumping up and down and chasing me through the house. Wiggling and shouting and running. And it cracks me up that God would give me a worshiping chihuahua. Who but God could do something hilariously wonderful like that. So again, this has been a completely wonderful night, you all. Thank you all for joining us in the swap scope. I'm going to try to stay in this place. Forget try. I'm going to stay in this place because as much as much as uh, we go through every day, we need every opportunity to uh, be built up and to be propelled into new levels and to new places of peace and uh, rest and recovery in the spirit of God. Thank you all. Thank you all. And I release the blessings of the Lord that make rich and add no sorrow in abundance to fully come your way like never before. That it, they hit you in the face like a pot. Every time you turn around, God is putting something new in your face and causing it to envelop and encase you like never before. Only he can do what he's getting ready to do. So nobody else will be able to take the credit. Every mouth that's shut, every blessing that's released, every uh, wholeness, every place of brokenness that he's allowing to be broken so that he can bring true alignment to be uh, in those places again, again. Only he can do it. It's about to be on, y'all. Again, remember, remember, didn't I blow your mind this time? That's going to be our song for the season. Amen. And again, who would have thunk it, for real? On Periscope. On Periscope. I don't know where none of y'all live. Most of y'all. I don't know where most of y'all live. But I guarantee you, your block is probably lit up right about now. But I bless God that he was able to use you all. Amen. He was able to use you all, uh, your body, your voice, uh, uh, to be able to. To affect change in the atmosphere of your region. Not just your block, but your region region will be transformed like never before. Because you spent time in the place of intercession on today. Your life will never be the same. I guarantee you. Because God, you can never be God-given. You give him your time. You give him your talent. You give him your treasure. You give him your all. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, he will not let you outgive him. So have an expectation, an attitude of expectation that you've never had before. Because when I tell you, it's on. It's on. We ain't saying nothing yet. And I look forward to hearing about it because God is getting ready to blow our minds this time. Good night, y'all. Bye-bye. Hallelujah.